Great. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, Craig Russo. I'm the Director of Innovation at Polyant and uh, leading the development of Polyant Games. Um, we're uh, really uh, uh, focused on the NFT space, uh, both from a direct investment and a liquidity perspective. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, really the evolution of the NFT asset class uh, as it relates to uh, kind of the emergence of decentralized finance applications uh, uh, for the market. Um, so quick introduction here. Uh, so I'll give a brief background on the current state of the market as we see it. Um, it's been a lot of uh, advancements over the last few months here. So uh, it'd be great to uh, uh, kind of catch, catch everyone up to you know, where we're at today. Uh, and then I'll, I'll touch briefly on Polyant Games' approach to the NFT market, how we're really looking to leverage um, a third-party ecosystem to facilitate the collaborations and, and underlying innovations that really are important to bring the NFTs uh, up to par with the current cryptocurrency market. Uh, and then I'll touch uh, uh, additionally on kind of our thesis from an investment perspective and, and what we're looking at uh, uh, moving forward into uh, 2021 here. So NFTs, you know, been around for a while in the space, uh, you know, dating back to the you know early counterparty days, uh, really in, you know, 2016, 2017 uh, with, you know, Ethereum uh, and the ERC-720 uh, uh uh, standard takeoff with with CryptoKitties. That's really where a lot of mainstream cryptocurrency users uh, became aware of NFTs. Um, but generally, um, you know, where the market stood over that period of time is that NFTs were really sequestered to be uh, you know, collectors' items or trading cards, and weren't really thought of as um, you know an alternative digital asset to uh, traditional cryptocurrencies or or even utility tokens. Uh, things began to shift a bit uh, as you know. 2018, 2019 was a very uh, builder uh, builder centric uh, uh, time frame, especially with the ongoing uh, bear market for the larger cryptocurrency industry. Uh, and so, a lot of cool and unique applications began to emerge uh, across blockchain gaming, uh, NFT marketplaces, uh, and and particularly looking at uh, NFT artwork as as one of the catalysts of of renewed interest that we saw uh, really over the last 12 months. And so uh, with 2019, it became very apparent that while a lot of the application layer it began to develop, the underlying techn technological layer really um, wasn't up to speed. Uh, and so that's everything from minting to transferring to on-chain uh, interactions. You know, a lot of, you know, very little blockchain gaming is actually on the blockchain uh, just from a scalability perspective. And so with 2020, we really saw this shift towards, hey, you know, NFTs are, are here to stay. How do we advance this into a, a really uh, accessible asset class that uh, can solve some of the issues that we see with traditional cryptocurrencies while also uh, opening up the, uh, the use cases for the entire industry? And so, uh, you know, over the course of even like the last uh, few months here, we're, we're seeing a push towards uh, uh, scalable technologies uh, for the various appli uh, applications, as well as a, a renewed interest and in understanding of uh, bringing in liquidity and traditional cryptocurrency users into the space, uh, which, you know, being a, a one of one uh, type of asset was very difficult uh, to do uh, in the past. Uh, and so really how the market is shaping up right now is that we have kind of this base underlying layer of, of true applications. And so you can think of these as the games, the virtual worlds, uh, you know, all the experiences that you'd imagine having, you know, uh, uh, NFTs for, uh, like uh, events, uh, things like that. Uh, that's really where the value of NFTs exists because having that uh, direct utility from the get-go, it really sets it apart from a lot of other uh, digital assets. And so on top of that application layer, obviously we have the blockchain and asset layer uh, where you know, everything that, that functions within these applications, like in-game items, artwork, uh, uh, the, the works really uh, uh, exist um, in traditionally not a very scalable environment. And so what we're seeing with the progression in 2020 is trying to understand how do we advance uh, this blockchain and asset layer to really facilitate interactions that we are used to uh, in the traditional cryptocurrency market. Because right now it's really sequestered to, uh, you know, the 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 one-to-one -one interactions between users as well as all on-chain transactions and minting that 
uh, really isn't uh, very scalable. And so with, with the DeFi layer, um, and I think DeFi is becoming a much more general term for some of the uh, types of uh, cryptocurrency interactions that we had uh, over the last few years, but we're starting to see a, a push towards a much more liquid access into the NFT asset class. And one of the things that we're really pushing for at Polyant Games is understanding that NFTs really can't exist in a silo uh, in terms of uh, internal economy. You really need to build out an application that leverages both uh, fungible and non-fungible tokens to uh, facilitate an, uh, an economy. And so what we're starting to see is this crosstalk between uh, NFTs and, and fungible tokens with groups like the Sandbox, uh, Axie Infinity, uh, platforms like Rarible, where, where there's a lot of uh, uh, game mechanics uh, to facilitate interactions. And, and even moving forward into ideas like fractional NFTs, where you can break an NFT into its parts, trade those like any other traditional cryptocurrency. And, in, and, and pushing it even further, looking at ways in which, you know, these more traditional DeFi life ap applications uh, can begin to apply to the NFT market. And so things like lending and, uh, and other uh, types of insurance type products that we, you know, we are big interest uh, for the space uh, are beginning to really uh, uh, find a foothold in the NFT market. And so really, as we're evolving here, these, the application layer and, and the asset layer, uh, really were built over the course of the last few years. And this DeFi layer is just beginning to emerge, uh, which uh, really has been the focus uh, of Polyant Games since our, our inception earlier this year uh, is, is to help facilitate uh, a lot of these markets. And so breaking down Polyant Games further, so we're, you know, we're an investment group that's focused on the NFT market. Uh, you know, we do both direct equity and token investments. Uh, as well as provide liquidity for emerging uh, uh, token economies uh, that want to facilitate NFTs and 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 leverage those assets to uh, build out their applications. And so, uh, when you look at the landscape uh, as an investment group, it's very difficult to understand the progressions and and really what's happening without rolling up our sleeves and participating in the market ourselves. And so we introduced the uh, Polyant Games ecosystem, uh, which is a third party driven ecosystem where we're bringing together a lot of uh, leaders in the space, both from a technical perspective uh, and an application layer perspective uh, to facilitate uh, innovations, collaborations, the idea of interoperability of assets, uh, which, you know, from an NFT perspective is one of the holy grails, um, really bringing everything under a, a, a single umbrella uh, in a chain agnostic way where we don't really want to push uh, uh, substantial uh, technical uh, um, restrictions on users and, and, and projects uh, to, to advance uh, the NFT asset class as a whole. And obviously, one of the main uh, major applications we're interested in is the uh, blockchain gaming market, which um, with the emergence of this play to earn type model uh, really is opening the door for um, uh, a, a, a simplified method of, of introducing cryptocurrency users to the NFT asset class. And so on top of the ecosystem, we also have a DAO, which will be uh, launching in the coming year, uh, which will be driven uh, uh, wholly by the users uh, to facilitate uh, protocol level decision making. Um, so I'll get more into that here. Um, yeah, so touching more on the ecosystem, uh, uh, Partners, uh, just here are some examples of that we uh, brought in to facilitate uh, these these next level type interactions. Uh, so the ecosystem partners from an application layer, you know, we've got names like Axie Infinity, Sandbox, Battle Racers. And so really a lot of uh, leading blockchain games. Uh, but when looking at the market of uh, uh, blockchain ecosystems, it's really important to understand uh, the bridge with traditional cryptocurrency technical uh, uh, leaders. And so that's where we, we really wanted to work with groups like Avalanche, Chainlink, uh, Maker, Matic to really bring everyone to the table to advance the mission of bringing the NFT asset class to the mainstream. Uh, and so obviously uh, a lot of work we've been focused on uh, in terms of our own internal development has been with Avalanche. And uh, we we're really uh, excited by the concept of bringing scalability from a uh, uh, swap uh, perspective to the NFT marketplace. Um, and, you know, all this will build on itself eventually where we can essentially build out uh, uh, inroads from Ethereum to more scalable environments uh, that can help uh, facilitate uh, larger user adoption. Uh, and so really the, the uh, 
major driver of our ecosystem is this idea of a dual state asset. Uh, so this is a concept just where a asset can exist both as a non-fungible token and as well as a fungible token. Uh, so the Poly Games Founders Key or PGFK uh, is an ERC721 membership and rewards token. Uh, really is a, a DeFi centric uh, uh, rewards vehicle where holders get gain lifetime perks like um, access to um, reward redemptions, liquidity mining, uh, unique uh, uh, distributions from partner token uh, launches. And so it's this concept of uh, leveraging a, a base layer NFT to facilitate not only our own internal economy, uh, but also the, the internal economies of our partners. Uh, and so we already have a number of examples today of, of how PGFKs are being leveraged across the board. Uh, and, and really, as we saw the space, uh, understood that, you know, for the PGFK to be fully adopted, we needed to introduce an element of liquidity to it. And so we, we launched, uh, are launching uh, what is called the Particle Bridge, uh, which is a fractionalization smart contract that where if you send one PGFK through, uh, you'll produce a thousand XPGPs or uh, Polyant Games uh, Founders Key Particles. Uh, and so the supplies between XPGFK and XPGPs are actually connected. So essentially there can only be up to 20,000 PGFKs and given the one to a thousand ratio only can ever be 20 million XPGP. And so XPGP will be our main utility token for our ecosystem and will facilitate uh, our decentralized uh, uh, exchange protocols as well as our, our NFT marketplace from, uh, from a utility perspective, as well as function as a major driver from a DeFi lending uh, 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 mechanism as it relates to PGFKs. And so this concept of a dual state asset is one that we're really hoping to promote and, and support amongst our partners, uh, as well as new games and, and other NFT applications that are looking to launch uh, via the Polyant Games ecosystem uh, to really understand how you can tap into not the collector's nature uh, and the unique identifi identifiers associated with NFTs, while also leveraging the liquidity and the uh, ease of understanding of a fungible token. Uh, and so we really think this, this concept of a dual state asset uh, will be a major, major uh, focus for the NFT space moving forward. Uh, and, you know, really building off of that, uh, as, as an investment group, we really, one of our main focus, as I said, is, is to facilitate liquidity. Because right now with a lot of games and a lot of uh, decentralized applications, not only are the user bases fragmented, uh, but the capital flows are, are just a fraction of, of what you would see in, in the traditional cryptocurrency market. And so we are introducing our own uh, decentralized swap markets, uh, first to be built on Ethereum as really as an MVP for uh, uh, liquidity, uh, and then eventually to be built on Avalanche for scalability and, and bringing really this to the, 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 the mainstream, uh, where the XPGP will be the main uh, base pair, as well as the uh, uh, really the focus point for uh, LP token staking within PGFKs. And so there's a lot of cool crosstalk between our decks and our, our collectible PGFK. Uh, and with our swap markets, we're going to be providing liquidity for our partners who want to list uh, their NFT adjacent fungible tokens on our, on our market. And so eventually what this will be is a one-stop shop for everyone from blockchain games to art platforms uh, uh, and beyond to come bring their their winnings or their uh, uh, you know their uh, mind rewards from these various platforms and have a liquid place to swap them uh, and so we're, we're very excited to be introducing uh, the ethereum version in the in the coming days uh, where the first uh, tokens pair will be uh, with our governance token which uh, was given out to PGFK holders at a one-to-one -one ratio uh, this week uh, and then beyond that, really looking at the NFT um, marketplace auction type model, which is very important to facilitate the continued growth of the space. Uh, we're looking at unique ways in which building out scalable solutions on Avalanche uh, to help facilitate not only uh, Avalanche uh, uh, native tokens, but uh, really looking at building out those bridges, as I mentioned, with the ERC721 ERC and 1155 standards uh, to facilitate adoption. Right now, there's about 250 to $300 million of value locked in NFTs. Uh, but as I mentioned, the process of transferring them is very expensive and not scalable. And so uh, one of the major things that we're focused on not only from a development perspective but from an investment perspective is building out the uh 
bridges between Ethereum and, and these alternative scalable uh, solutions. And so, and then finally, we're looking at unique ways in which we can leverage NFTs as uh, really uh, uh, token carrying vehicles, uh, because we believe that the next generation of on-chain derivatives uh, will involve N NFTs and charting technology. Uh, and so we're investing heavily into that space as well. Um, and so, you know, really what, you know, what we're seeing the space come to is this, uh, this, Crosstalk between uh, you know traditional applications like blockchain gaming and uh, you know, this this surge of decentralized finance type uh, interactions, uh, and so at the end of the day, you know with any boom like this, you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, fly by night type applications, and what we hope to facilitate are uh, systems that can really withstand um, the test of time, and you know more importantly, uh, vampire like actions against liquidity. Uh, and so we're applying that not only to our ecosystem, but to the investments that we make. We want to help facilitate these self-sustaining internal economies that really aren't just going to be uh, abused or you know leveraged by uh, 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 DeFi users to uh, essentially just capture the liquidity and move on. And I think that's where the NFT space really uh, has the opportunity to shine, given the you know, again, that 2017, 2018, 2019 building era of these, these hardcore applications that can have that user retention. And so I think, you know, the, the combination of actual products with these token economies will facilitate, uh, uh, you know, these, this next generation of, of, of token economies. And so from Poly Games, we're investing in everything from blockchain gaming, uh, to scalable solutions for transfers and minting. Uh, we're looking at ways in which we can better uh, facilitate crypto art. Um, I know there's a lot of debate right now about, you know, just copy and pasting uh, uh, from, from online and how that's different from an NFT. I think NFTs have the ability to uh, really stand apart from just traditional digital art. Um, and, you know, really interested in looking at, uh, you know, how the crosstalk between in-game currencies uh, and NFTs exist and how you can leverage the Polynet game steps for liquidity uh, uh, for those types of applications. And so, you know, we're, 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 our ecosystem is growing very rapidly. And one of the things we hope to, to work on, especially with the Avalanche uh, uh, ecosystem and team, uh, is, you know, as I mentioned, facilitating this crosstalk between Ethereum and Avalanche uh, that, you know, really will will help easily port uh, all the work that has been done over the last years uh, to to scalable environments uh, while also facilitating that that asset transfer and so right now um, we have a few you know a, a small but growing nft portfolio so Polyant labs is, has around 17 investments uh, and our focus on on nfts has been uh, largely over the last six to eight months uh, in terms of investment strategies. Uh, this will scale substantially over the next year uh, as we look to invest uh, not only in the uh, infrastructure layer, but also the liquidity layer associated with the applications. Um, and you know, as part of this effort, we're really uh, building out our current team uh, from not only from a, a trading desk perspective, but also from a venture creation and venture investments perspective. So we have a lot of uh, open positions right now uh, so if this is of any, any interest to anybody, uh, you know, to check out our Twitter and, you know, we'd be happy to connect and, and, and learn more about, uh, uh, about you. So, um, you know, in, in summary, as we look at, at the market, um, you know, it, we saw this, this uptick in interest, uh, you know, over the last almost six weeks or so, um, at the end of the day, I think this, this type of dynamic is here to stay, but you know, the one thing we want to make sure that NFT, uh, entrepreneurs don't lose sight of is is that underlying utility that uh, these assets allow and and the application layer is going to be so important for uh, the ultimate growth of the space um, and you know as as a lot of traditional cryptocurrency users look to uh, uh, diversifying out of their you know 2017 era of utility tokens uh, we really see uh, the NFT market as being the ideal location uh, for those looking to uh, um, you know, invest in projects that uh, ha, you know, are solving a lot of the issues that those those other ones that they invested in in the ICO era uh, failed to solve. So, 
um, yeah, and you know, in summary, we're we're very very bullish on the space, and and you know, look forward to uh, continuing to uh, work with the traditional cryptocurrency community and the and the technical providers that uh, currently drive it. Yeah, uh, appreciate you taking the time to listen to me today. Uh, you know, uh, here's our contact. You can email me directly at Craig at Polyant .io, uh, and Polyant Games is our our site. And you can find us at Twitter at at Polyant Games. Thank you.